three, two, one, go. Before we start, these settings are pretty universal for all games played with a link cable, but this video is specifically about EAWRC, just so you know. I have put chapters into this video, so if you don't want to know the background to why EAWRC's launch has been so wobbly and just want to jump straight for the fix, you can do so and I won't be insulted. So, how did I fix it and manage to get the game running in ultra settings in VR on Big Bertha? Roll titles and remember, we're born to respawn. There are four elements to this fix for EA's WRC, but they can be applied to all games played using a link cable. The elements are NVIDIA Control Panel, Meta Link App, Meta Debug Tool, in-game graphic settings. I will state that these settings are specific for EA's WRC, but the NVIDIA Control Panel, Meta Link and Oculus Debug settings are pretty good for all games played via a link cable. NVIDIA Control Panel. So let's jump straight in, right click anywhere on your monitor and open the NVIDIA Control Panel. If you are running Windows 11, you may have to click show more options, which is f dumb, Microsoft. My preference is to not allow the NVIDIA app to interfere with any of the important settings like image scaling, anisotropic filtering and anti-aliasing. So you will notice most of these are turned off or set to application controlled only, but there are a few important boxes that need ticking. Low latency mode on ultra, power management mode on prefer maximum performance, texture filtering on quality, VR rendered frames on one, VR variable rate super sampling off. Pause this screen and make sure you've copied all my settings. Okay, this is the point in the video where I start banging on about how good virtual desktop is, but in this case, it doesn't do a very good job with VR games on Unreal Engine like Assetto Corsa Competizione, F124 and Rensport. So, time to dig out your link cable. I use this particular cable from Uni, which is a 5 meter link cable with a separate charging port which keeps your Quest headset at 100% charged permanently. I've put a link in the description down below. It has become my go-to cable and I highly recommend it. MetaLink software. You have to have the MetaLink software installed on your PC. There's a link to that down below as well. So once that is done, connect your Quest, click devices, select your headset, scroll down to graphics preferences and click. You only have two options here. So set the refresh rate to 90 Hertz. I'll explain why later. Then set the rendering resolution to match your headset. Quest 2's resolution is 3664 by 1920. So set it to 1.0x. The Quest 3's resolution is 4128 by 2208. So set the slider to 1.1x. You can go higher than this if required, but to start with, we'll stick to these resolutions for now. You can fiddle till your heart's content once we've got the game running in a good state. Before we get into the debug tool, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. Please also consider subscribing and joining my channel membership for exclusive emojis, badges, and game key giveaways on my members' Discord server. Thanks. Oculus Debug Tool. If you have the MetaLink software installed, then you also have the debug tool. So on my PC, it is located here. See Program Files, Oculus Support, Oculus Diagnostics, Oculus Debug Tool.exe. I've also put a shortcut on my desktop for ease of access. Open the debug tool and you will see a bewildering array of options. Be calm though and just copy my settings. Two points worth noting, to set the encode bitrate to 940, you'll have to type 940 into a notepad or a browser window and then copy paste it. Second point, which is more important, every time you start the debug tool, asynchronous spacewalk will reset to either disabled or auto. This is the most important setting for this fix for EA's WRC to work, so click on it, then set it to force 45 FPS ASW enabled. What we are doing with this setting is forcing the game to render at 45 frames a second, then asynchronous spacewalk will extrapolate a new rendered frame based on the last frame it received, thus boosting the frame rate back to 90 FPS. So, our PC is under less stress and it is rendering less frames, thus we can pump up the graphical fidelity and let ASW do the rest. Some games don't work very well with ASW on, WRC does seem to be okay, but if you're having problems with any title, then switch ASW to Auto instead. If you want to see how your PC is performing under duress, then highlight Visible HUD 
and select performance. This will give you a real time graph of how your PC is responding and is a great tool for fine tuning your graphic settings. Before we get to the in-game graphics settings, please remember Big Bertha is running a 12th gen i9, an RTX 4080 and 32 gig of DDR5 RAM. Is your system is less powerful, then dial your settings back a notch or two. EA's previous entry into the world of rallying was the well-regarded Dirt Rally 2.0, running on its own in-house Ego engine. Fast forward to 2023 and EA released the highly anticipated WRC running on the new Unreal Engine 5, which is unfortunate. Screen tearing, stutter, lack of graphical fidelity felt like a massive backward step for the franchise and left fans very disappointed. IGN gave the game a paltry 6 out of 10 on launch, stating multiple issues, some of which I have mentioned. EA released VR mode into beta on April the 30th and oh dear, even on my beast of a PC running a 12th gen i9 and an RTX 4080, the game is almost unplayable. Contrast blown out, shimmering, stutter and terrible graphical performance which caused me to feel nauseous and I'm a veteran player with iron VR legs. The 18th of July comes around and version 1.9.0 is rolled out with some VR bug fixes. Things are better but still pretty underwhelming. Now this is not entirely Codemaster's fault. Unreal Engine 5 is notoriously bad when it comes to VR and developers seem to be struggling to overcome its shortfalls. So. In-game graphic settings. Now we're going to tackle the in-game graphic settings. So fire up EA's WRC and hit the options and extras button. Go to VR settings first and make sure your 3D location reveal, driver avatar and fixed horizon are on. Fixed horizon will prevent any motion sickness you may get due to the movement of the car. So this is highly recommended. I have crash vignette off. This depends on how a big crash makes you feel. I crash a lot, <laughs> but it doesn't affect me, so this is all turned all the way down. Scroll down to Custom Hidden Area Mask, turn it on and set the width to 95 and the height to 85. This setting reduces the field of view so you can eke out a bit more performance. Next, go to Basic Graphic Settings. Anti-aliasing should be at Epic or Cinematic. Anisotropic filtering should be at 16 times. Upscaler on DLSS for NVIDIA cards or Fidelity FX for AMD cards. Upscaler auto quality off. Upscaler quality on quality. Advanced graphic settings. Quality preset ultra. Shadows high. Fog off. Particles ultra. Weather ultra. Crowd ultra low because I'm not really that bothered. Ground cover ultra. Trees ultra. Dynamic objects ultra. Car reflections ultra low. This is important because car reflections eat up a lot of your processing power. Post-processing, ultra. Mirrors, low. Skid marks, off. Track, ultra. Shaders, ultra. Motion blur, off. All of the settings I have on ultra can be turned down to high if your system is struggling. Don't forget about the performance overlay in the debug tool if you run into a problem. I would recommend you jump into a time trial Give it a run and see how the game performs. Make adjustments if need be, then jump back into the same time trial for consistency. Once again, I will state that these settings are specific for EA's WRC, but the NVIDIA control panel, Metalink and Oculus debug settings are pretty good for all games played via link cable. More importantly though, what do you think? Are your settings similar to mine? Is there a setting that you swear by that I've missed out on? You know the drill. Get involved and comment down below. Well, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button. The algorithm loves the likes. Plus, if you enjoyed this content, you could join my channel membership like these lovely people did. You get custom badges, emojis, and an exclusive members-only channel on my Discord. If you want to watch more content from my channel, you can click here or here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the other side.